to share with you a little bit about 12-step programs, um, particularly AA and NA, about the 12 steps, a little bit about sponsorship, um, but just give you basically um, an overview, a little bit of history of the 12 steps and um, what they're used for, just for people on the outside that are struggling with addiction. Um, 12 step program, AA started actually in, um, in the 30s, started in 1935. Um, it was started by Bill Wilson and Dr. Robert Hallbrook Smith, who um, are known affectionately as Bill W. and Dr. Bob, um, in accordance to the anonymity that um, AA gives you. So anyways, they started out in 1935. Um, back then, what had happened was uh, Bill W. could not stay sober to save his life, even, you know, losing his marriage, um, different jobs. Finally, what happened, um, he was hospitalized. And then when he left the hospital, he went out on a um, to a conference. And in the job he had, he was into sales back then in the 30s. And so he goes to this conference. And once the conference is over at 5 o'clock in the evening, um, Usually there's, you know, cocktail parties and different things that sells people do in the world. So what he did is he went and got on the pay phone and called up a church, called a couple churches. And so stayed on the phone with one of these pastors for a couple hours. Um, then what he started doing is he started running into people that had a drinking problem. He would take them into his house, actually, to against his wife's wish, wishes, really. But he was maintaining his sobriety through this. And so what they found out was that him and Dr. Bob, when they met and talked, they found the quality of... Um, one addict helping another to be able to talk to them, be able to give them support, to be able to talk about these things. And as things went along, he learned that he wasn't just actually doing this for that person, but he was also doing it to strengthen um, his own recovery. So anyways, they, they started out in 1935. Um, it caught on pretty well. Um, the steps were originally written through the Oxford group, and they had really strong biblical, um, biblical um, connections. Um, even though AA is not a religious program, uh, more of a spiritual program. So a, the, it took off in 1935. Shortly after, well, 1953, um, Narcotics Anonymous NA um, started with a group of, of six men. Um, they had a six men and they, and they um, voted a chairperson. His name was Jimmy Kinnon, who's known affectionately as Jimmy K now in, back then in the NA circles. Um, they had ups and downs and stuff NA did for whatever reasons uh, for a while. And it wasn't until 1972 that NA really took off, um, became worldwide, Brazil, Japan, different, different places. Um, now they um, are on 170 countries and uh, written uh, language, uh, let me see, 90, 90 languages it's written in the big book is. So anyways, they started out then. And so now in the 12 step world, because of the steps and um, the, the steps, the 12 steps is almost a prescription um, for right living in a way of living your life, you know, in a, in a, in a full, um, you know, a, a good way. You know, when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. If you if you, you know, said something or you feel like you wronged somebody, you turn back around later on that week and you try to clean it up and say, I'm sorry, make amends for it. And so I think that's why the 12 step programs have been so successful um, since they started. And because of their success, they've crossed over. Now we have um, we have Overeaters Anonymous, um, Gamblers Anonymous, Sex Addiction Anonymous. We have all these anonymous um, groups basically sharing a couple of traits. The 12 steps they might be a little bit different, but pretty much the same, um, as well as fellowshipping and, um, you know, a, a of, you know, working through different various addictions. So anyways, I'm gonna go over the 12 steps briefly with you right now, um, just to touch on them. Step one was um, we admit, admitted we were powerless over drugs and alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable. It's just ba basically getting to a place to where you admit that you, um, do have a problem, you know, admitting it, you know, in, in addiction and in treatment centers and stuff. One of the very first things that you got to break through with a client is their denial. We hold on to this denial just to hold it. Once we get through the denial and you're able to say that my life is unmanageable, um, then you're at a place where you could start. Um, step two is we came to believe that a power greater than ourself could restore us to sanity. So basically what that is, is that it lets us know that it's not, you know, it's not me. I tried it my way. 
and my way didn't work. So let me reach out and 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 think of something other than myself. Then that. Step three was we made a decision to turn our lives in the care of God over to the, turn our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. Um, you'll you'll notice that through um, twelve steps in different programs when they mention God, um, it says followed by as we understand Him, understood Him. So it's kind of what our viewpoint is. I know that. Um, you know, they've had acronyms as far as God goes in uh, 12 Steps of AA or NA, use, use words like group of drunks um, or good orderly direction. Basically, what it is, is we want to look at something that is beyond us other than us. So um, spiritual step. Step four is one of the steps that is really, it's really hard for some people to do because it, it makes you sit down. I remember sitting down and um writing out my fourth step. And, and, and when I was writing out my fourth step, it was, it was hard for me because I had to really go back, you know, and the way I did, I did it in a chronological order. So what I would do is, you know, I started using when, when I was 17 years old and then from using my, using my experience of using and, and criminal activity, just all the damage I did in my life started pretty much back then. And so I had to write down, you know, stuff that I did, things I didn't feel good about and make this long exhausted list of it. And so after doing that, um, then you had to share it with God and somebody other than yourself. And that's usually done with a sponsor. Um, well, and I'll, I'll touch on sponsorship here um, in a minute in regards to um, what a sponsor, you know, what do you look for in a sponsor, what a sponsor really is and um, how to work through that. So I'll touch on that in a minute. So step six is we were ready to have God remove all of our defects of character. And so basically what this is, is that it gave us a chance then, you know, it's our old behavior brought us down the road in our addiction. And so we have all these, this, you know, old behavior, all these things, all these old habits, all these ways of thinking that were bad and negative that made me live the kind of life that I did. And so basically it's trying to get rid of those old behaviors and start to clean up the mess that, you know, I started. Um, step seven, I call six and seven the spiritual steps because they, they're, they're similar to step three um, in, the, in the fact about them being um, spiritual. So step seven is um, humbly ask God to remove these defects of character from us. So basically, um, you know, as far as recovery goes and um, working the steps and, you know, trusting God and um, getting out of our own way. Um, you know, humility is so important. Um, I, I, I shared, I did a, uh, I shared my testimony, um, uh, February, it was, yeah, it was this year, it was February 15th, Saturday, February the 15th. And I believe it, it, it still gets restreamed. And, um, so if you haven't saw it, it'd be great if you want to go back there and, and you want to look at it. Um, I'd love to share my story with you. I would love to share my life with you. Um, all for the intent of, of, of reaching out and, and helping and um, assisting. And, you know, as we go along, you get to know me. I'm going to have these weekly talks at, on Wednesdays at six o'clock. Um, so we can get to know each other through time. Anyways, you can go back there and you can take a look at it and you'll, you'll learn a little bit more about me and my journey. Um, but anyways, I, I, you know, I was talking about humility and when I was sharing last, last time, a lot of people think that um, humility or being humble, humility is something that's humiliating. And, and it's not it, it, what it really is, is um, um, humility is not thinking um, less of yourself. Um, humility is thinking of yourself less often. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, if I was able to give somebody a trait in recovery, um, first thing I probably would give them would be the, being able to be humble, being able to be teachable. Um, step eight is um, we made a list of all the people that we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them. Um, so this is this is similar to step four in the way that you know we've got to look back and we've got to list you know all these things. And the way that I did step eight when I did it, I um, chronologically went back through. Um, oh, probably grab these one, please. Sorry about that. Knock some stuff over here. Um, yeah, start here. 
Okay. So anyways, anyways, I'm sorry about that. I dropped some stuff around here. Um, so anyways, um, step nine is taking that list of uh, people. And uh, what I was saying was as, um, as I went on, you know, step uh, eight, step eight was very, um, it was very similar to me to step four, but the only difference is, is that the list that we made and the people that we hurt and the harm that we did, um, in step nine, we actually put, you know, boots on the ground. We put, you know, things in motion to where we were able to go back and make amends to these folks. Um, I, I was sure I think in my testimony that um, um, somebody that lived next door to me um, back when I was using this is probably in the early 80s, um, broke into their house, sold their toolkit, take the toolkit, go down and hawk it, get money, go buy dope. And I mean, this is this is one of probably a hundred you know, different things that I've done in my addiction. I had no boundaries. I didn't really have no remorse. Um, I, I was going to use. And so what I would do is I would get money the only way I could. And that was go rip people off. So anyways, um, I ran back into the gentleman 20, 25 years later. It was, this is more than that. Actually, it was probably more like 30 years later, um, running on a trail. And um, I was able to start up a conversation with him and, um, you know, tell him what I did. And basically his response was, I know, I know that's what you did. And so um, being able to do what I can do, what I could do from there, you know, if, if it means, you know, going and giving somebody $200, the opportunity wasn't there to actually give him money back for the, the tools. It was just a short conversation. And I don't really necessarily know that, that he even really um, accepted my, um, my apology. And, and, and sometimes in life, when you're doing a step nine, that that's what's that's going to happen. It, you know, you might not be able to um, have them forgive you, but you have to remember it's just it's, it's the um, it's the act of going and sincerely um, um, doing that and, and being sincere. in it. And if there's a way of patching it over or working it out, um, then you do that, you know, and, and, and in step, step nine, it says when except there's a part of the last part of step nine is is except when doing so could harm you or others. So in other words, like you can't force something on somebody or not. You know, there's certain things that you can't do, you know, but the, but, but the main thing is making that gesture and doing it and walking through it. Okay. And step, um, and step 10 now is we continue to take a personal inventory in life. And when we were wrong, partly when we were wrong, we proper, prop, excuse me, promptly admitted it. So, it's similar to um, it's similar to step four. It's similar to step eight in and of itself. So I, I like to call steps 10, 11 and 12. Um, I would like to call them the maintenance steps because, um, you know, it's maintenance. We, 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 it's not like a one and done. It's not like we sit down and we write the fourth step and then we take that fourth step and we share it with our sponsor and we kind of try to hope, patch up our past with that. Where step ten is is a, a, a daily, a weekly, um, you act. You know, look back over your week. You know, did I say something to my dad? Did I say something to my sister? Did I did I do this or did did I do that? And um, honestly, asking yourself these things, and then circle back around and um, and say, you know, patch things up if you can. Um, okay, step eleven is sought through prayer and meditation our constant contact with God, praying for only his knowledge of our will and the power to carry it out. So uh, I work in a treatment facility right now. So um, I'm able to, um, you know, help other people. It's, um, you know, knowledge to carry it out, um, you know. So it's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a maintenance step. It's a step where you're, you know, you're in contact, you know, prayer for me, it's prayer. Um, for others, it might be something, something different than, it, than prayer. Um, but it's basically a connection to be able to, you know, be in contact with God, kind of be led by God and, um, and do that step. Okay. The last step is, is having a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, carry the message to the addicts and practice these principles in all of our affairs. Similar to 10 and 11, it's a, it's a maintenance step. This is something that is, 
is is like I said about step four. It's not one and done. Step four is really not one and done either. Um, in during my recovery, I mean, I started in 1981 trying to get clean. 87. Many, many. There's been many times and many relapses where I tried to um, try to get sober. So you know, there's lots of four steps. Even if you you stay sober. And, you know, you're sober for 10 years. People still work the steps on a daily basis. And sometimes you go back through them again and again. You just don't go through the steps one time. You go through them again and again, which I will get to when I talk about sponsorship here in a minute. Um, okay, so in, okay, going to sponsorship, to pick somebody that um, is a sponsor or what does a sponsor do, basically, is you want to look at a sponsor and pick a sponsor you want to pick it excuse me you want to pick a sponsor by um you know listening um to his share watching him in meetings um talk to people how many people do, do, does he know um stuff like that somebody that you're attracted to that can help you and part of their part of their um Part of their thing is, is when you get a sponsor, they actually have sponsorship meetings you can go to. When you start going to 12 step meetings, I would recommend that, um, I would recommend that you go to a sponsorship meeting. And what that is, is in the beginning of the meeting, people will raise their hands basically and say that they're willing to sponsor. So, you, you know, there might be eight people, there might be 10 people that, um, that are available as a sponsor. So that's a good place to start. Or like I said, you, 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 you know, you look for somebody that you're attracted to or something that you heard them share something, the way that they interact after the meeting with other people. Um, you know, there's, there's a host of that. So what a sponsor is doing, basically sponsor, a sponsor is making an agreement to you to, um, you know, to walk beside you, to help you, um, to help you through frustrations, um, to help you through, you know, struggles, to help you through wanting to drink or wanting to use. Um, that's basically what they're signing up for, that they're there for that. And this is a wonderful thing that you're able to sponsor, to be able to sponsor, um, somebody to be able to sponsor you, you like that. Um, also, a sponsor is um, would be somebody to share your hurts, habits, and hangups with. Um, and, and getting to this is because of the importance of, of step five, um, that you can you know, share these things with this person, um, especially in early recovery. You know, people say, oh, well, I don't have a sponsor right now. They've been, you know, sober two weeks, three weeks. Well, what, why don't you have a sponsor right now? I uh, just don't feel like, you know, I just don't feel like um, I've met the right person yet. You know, what is the right, the right person or something you could look for is what I'm, I'm saying, I'm telling you what sponsors do. But the thing is, is in early recovery, your first couple of weeks, you need somebody there beside you to help you, to be able to talk to you. They're basically agreeing when they become your sponsor to be available to you when you're going through these things. And so that's, and, and so anyways, that's part of what, what they're for. Um, and in doing this and sharing these things with your sponsor, your sponsor basically is also saying to you that he's um, willing to keep, you know, what you're sharing with him confidential, you know, uh, keeping your anonymity to where you don't know, know this. And so anyways, um, anyways, um, I would, would, suggest getting a sponsor in your first week or two of recovery, at least to have somebody guide you and show you the process. Um, a sponsor also would, would do, um, the thing about a sponsor is, is like I was saying, you know, you see somebody that, you know, you're attracted to and you kind of find that out by seeing how they interact with other people at meetings and stuff. And so once you do get a sponsor, I would look for somebody, I would look for somebody that has several years of recovery, somebody that, um, somebody that would um, be able to guide you, somebody that's working the steps themselves. How do you know that, right? Five years clean, how do you know that? You'll hear your sponsor share in meetings and we'll talk about, well, I did my ninth step or I helped my sponsee do, you know, my fifth step. We'll just walk him through whatever. And so you'll know this from, um, from um, you know, hearing him share. And for, for the reason for them knowing a lot of people, a good sponsor, what a good sponsor does is a good sponsor will take you, he'll put you under his wing. He will um, introduce you around to um, others that he knows through meetings. And um, you're gonna you're, you're, you're gonna need this. The reason this is so important is that um, when I first got clean, my spiritual sponsor told me, um, he said to me, um, Greg, you've got to change playgrounds and playmates. And so um, what that meant is I needed to make new friends. I needed to hang out at different places 
And so now, now I'm this guy that's got three days clean. I'm doing, I'm doing what my, my brother suggested or somebody suggested to me, you need to go to meetings, you need to do this. Well, that's fine and well that, you, you know, you need to do this stuff, but you do need to meet new people. So a good sponsor will introduce you around um, to people to introduce you. Um, we'll go, with the, go, go to at least one meeting um, a week with you, if not more. When you're new in recovery um, or even in recovery, especially new in recovery, you should be attending. Um, you should be attending meetings probably three or four times, three or four times a week, um, just to be able to stay grounded. Um, so, anyways, one of the important things about me, me, a meeting, a twelve step meeting, is just one function of the twelve steps of Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous. The other side of it that's just as important as that is the part of after a meeting or at another time after a meeting, it's not uncommon for um, people to go out and fellowship afterwards um, where they go, they have, you know, say there's an eight o'clock meeting, the meeting gets over at nine. It's not unusual for, for a group of people, you know, five, 10, whatever, five people to go around the corner and sit and have um, coffee or pastry or whatever um, there. And so in doing that, um, you're exposed to these folks, you're brand new, your nerves, probably this, you know, your sponsor, like I said, we'll introduce you around and try to make you feel comfortable. And so sitting there at the table that you might be sitting at the table with one guy might be a biker that shot, shot meth for, you know, 30 years. Um, Other person could be a doctor, you know, somebody could be, you know, all walks of life. It does not, addiction does not discriminate. Um, And and so you, you ask questions, you know, you pick your mind, pick their mind. You say, what was it like for you? What was your first week of, uh, what was your uh, first week in recovery? Like, how did you feel? Did you have trouble sleeping? You know, just ask these questions. You have, you know, ask these different questions from different people. You know, what was it like for you to do step four? You know, did your, did your sponsor give you a format? Did your sponsor give you, um, did your sponsor give you some questions and stuff that you needed an answer? How were you guided along to that process? So that's the importance of, um, of fellowshipping. Um, also, also um, with the twelve step involvement, there there becomes there, there's different things, different activities you can do. They have clean and sober bowling leagues um, as part of you know a few years back, part of a, a clean and sober softball league, which was really really cool. Some people take it a little too serious, but you know it's still it was really cool. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of a, a, about, you know, 12 step meetings as far as I'll, I'm going to go into the steps um, in another in another discussion where I'll just go over the steps and I'm able to describe them and talk about them in a little bit more detail than I did today and not as scattered as I did today. Um, in my notes, I try to, you know, try to be humble, um, um, reachable, teachable um, and, you know, genuine, which, you know, I am. but. Um, Anyways, I'll go into those more in more depth. So what's the importance of um, of 12 step meetings? What is what is the goal? What do 12 step meetings have um, to offer you to recover? Um, Number one, they're a safe place to go to recovery. Number one, you're not going to go someplace where people are drinking or doing drugs there. It's a place that you um, you can go and hang out where you'll meet people that don't use drugs and alcohol. Um, there is a spiritual component to um, recovery. And then also, there's also a worldwide, you have an access of a worldwide network that's available. I think I shared earlier before that with AA. Um, AA now um, is in 190 different countries. And the big book is... Um, interpreted and written in 90 different languages. Imagine that 90 different languages. The big book is so it is literally all over the world. Um, If it's a night and you're struggling day and you're struggling and you just need some support or you need to go to a meeting, but you, 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 there's not a meeting around you anywhere, you know, you can go online and, um, you know, type in, you you know, go into a, a, a meeting, they have online meetings where you can go on there and you can hear some, you know, hear people and feel supported and jump right in there in the meetings. That's always available to you. Also through um, Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, they have both, they have hotlines. They have an AA hotline and an NA hotline where they have people that don't get paid. Basically they're volunteers. Same as somebody that's uh, a secretary or chairperson at a meeting 
um, would be. And if you need to talk and you're struggling, you can call that number and talk. That's basically what they're signing up for. So, and also, also, I think one of the main things about meetings is, is that you're, you know, you find a meeting, a big meeting, you'll find, you'll find, you'll have exposure to people that have, um, that have lots, a lots of clean time. You're being exposed to a lot of people that have been clean for a lot of years. And like I said, um, that's when you ask questions, you pick people's brains, you know, what is it like to, you know, what did you feel like your first couple of weeks when, when you were getting clean? Were you able to sleep? You know, all these questions that we have, I mean, you got to remember that everybody, we're, 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 this is one at, the thing about, about it, about 12 step is, is it's about, it's one addict helping another addict. And, and that's the beauty of it. And, and, and it's totally free. It costs absolutely nothing. So, yeah, that's really nice. And so anyways, um, I'll talk more in depth um, next, you know, about the 12 steps as far as, you know, breaking the steps down and what, what do they mean? What are they like? You know, if you go online, there's a thousand different people with a thousand different views of them. And a lot of it is just, you know, jargon and this and that, you know, you need to sit down with somebody. That's why your sponsor is so important. You need to sit down with your sponsor and you, your sponsor will break all this stuff down for you in a way that you can understand. Um, next week, I'm planning on um, talking about um, relapse prevention. So we'll go in a little bit about triggers, um, coping strategies, um, different things that you can use. Um, to walk you through times that you might think are slippery. Um, so next week, I will see you at six o'clock uh, next Wednesday. Thanks. You're shaking. I'm Greg, we have lost you.